and welcome to Labor Lens, where we bring to you update information in the world of work and pay. I am Sharon Ijasson. This week we have interesting news stories for you and also update information for those seeking job placement across the country. But before we continue to dig deeper, let's go on a short break. We will be right back. The clamor for the increase of minimum wage has continued to be on the front burner by Nigerian Labour Congress following the economic downturn in the country. This led to the federal government setting up a committee to come up with a way forward to ensure that Nigerian workers are well rewarded for their labour. For labour leaders, they believe the committee is slow in its duties and alleged plans to truncate the process. This committee, of which I'm the deputy chairman, and of which the NSC president and the labor centers have about nine representatives. I put up a, 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 a timetable, and we do expect that by the third quarter of the year, a no minimum wage will be announced for the country. The legitimate demand for the review of the 18,000 minimum wage is born out of the current reality of high cost of living free fall of the Naira, and high cost of goods and services. The minimum wage of 125 Naira was equivalent then to $200. As we speak today, the 18,000 minimum wage is actually less than $50. And therefore, both in quantum and what it can be able to do for Nigerian workers going forward is that this demand is both legitimate and therefore legal. Speakers at the event stressed the need for Nigerian workers to be fairly treated and want the Nigerian Labour Congress to revive its political party and be part of the decision making in the country. Working peoples in our country deserve better electoral processes, deserve better policy processes, and they deserve better governance processes. And all the working people in this country and the leaders of the working people in this country need to pay attention to engagement in all of these different spheres and sectors in order to bring remarkable improvements that can address the interests of the working peoples of this country. We must continue to perfect the skill of negotiation, of persuasion, but it will not bring about fundamental changes. You will need to acquire political power. And you don't need to doubt whether you have that capacity. If a man who is as short as myself can do it, those of you who are six footers can do it even faster. We are the only symbol, the epitome of social change in this country. Our opinion is we need to get back to the drawing board and see how we go beyond our traditional role of just protecting the welfare of workers and the downtrodden, and also be active participants in the political development or evolution of this country. In 1978, the labor union was born with the aim of advocating and struggling for a better working condition for Nigerian workers. The celebrations saw dignitaries and past labor leaders in attendance. The Trade Union Congress of Nigeria held its National Executive Council meeting to react to several issues in the country. Among the issues discussed are insecurity in the country, volatile political system, and 2019 election campaign, the lingering fuel crisis, among others. The president of TUC, Boy Boy Kagaima, at the next meeting advised state governors who can't address workers' wages to resign. Only healthy state in this country that has no arrears of salaries and other wages is level state. All the other states have one issue in terms of salaries and wages or the other. There is no exception. And you find out that if it is not one month salary that is not paid, it will be 13 months of gratuity or pension that has not been paid. 
So I am telling you, taking these issues holistically, we can only say Lagos State Government is the only healthy state in this country. When you have been paid, your Paris form, bail out funds and everything, and we also know that the president said it, that they should look for a way to also make sure that they are paying the workers. And I can continue to say, all those governors, are they being salary? Their aides, are they being salary? Their commission, are they being salary? It's ungodly, it's unfair. Other labor leaders in attendance at the neck in session while calling for the speedy review of the minimum wage observed that the fight against corruption will not achieve the desired result without addressing the injustice being perpetrated by political office holders who collect multiple pensions and gratuities while still serving government in another capacity. The fact that federal government have been releasing some money, I didn't mean they have the interest of Nigerian workers. They will have found a way to have pay some of the outstandings. It, it, it baffles me that where we are talking about fighting corruption, somebody's gratuity, somebody's pension, somebody's salary is not being paid. Uh, uh, what we are saying is that uh, teachers as a body believe that uh, those states that have not been uh, up to date in meeting their responsibility and obligation to their workers are just being very selfish because no governor has been owed any entitlement. The neck in session, however, called on the federal government to declare emergency in the power sector as no nation can develop without power. The Trade Union Congress added that a call for tariff hike cannot be a solution and will be resisted. The Nigerian Maritime Labor Act enacted in 2003 by Nigeria's National Assembly helped in forming a joint maritime industrial council which is expected to translate to better working conditions for dock workers, seafarers, NPA workers and others. At this gathering in Lagos, the Nigerian Maritime Workers Union took time to celebrate its immediate past President General, Comrade Anthony Inted, for selfless service and stability in the system. Workers say there was industrial peace and harmony during Inter's eight-year tenure. Inter is a unique person. When you talk about the uh, maritime industry today, he did a lot to bring peace into that sector. Using his own personal finances to ensure we have peace in the industry of the maritime industry. And if we say today, Hello. for the past eight years, he was the President General of the Maritime Workers Union. You seldom see anything like strike in the industry. It's somebody that believes in Jojo. Well, I would say I'm privileged to be alive, to be part of this celebration, the Thanksgiving, to the Almighty God organized by Comrade Tony Ted Emmanuel, President General Emeritus of the Union, who has toiled day and night to lift himself to where he is today. The man who took over from him, Comrade Adewale Ade Yonju, has very kind words for his predecessor. Well, he's a wonderful person, and uh, it's an institution that all of us are tapping from. The only thing we wish him is a good health and long life to enjoy the fruit of his labor. Uh, he's not retired, but not tired. Uh, we still want him to continue to support the system that he has built for almost 28 years. And uh, we hope better things will come after it. Other people here say labor leaders need to emulate Comrade Inted and ensure that just like him, they need to collectively bargain for better welfare for workers. Yeah.